What's up everybody, my name's Dan On, and welcome to Honestly. Today we're checking out Secret Lab's secretish chair, the Noya chair. And this chair, I love this chair because it feels like it's an ergonomic office chair and a gaming chair had a baby together, which is something that I've been dreaming about, something that I've longed for. But it's like a secret love affair baby because it seems like for some reason Secret Lab doesn't want you to know about this chair because well one, how many of you guys have heard of the Secret Lab Noya chair? They don't seem to advertise it nearly as hard as their gaming line. And two, because even when you go to the website, it's pretty hard to find this chair. Like it's buried pretty deep in the menus. And I don't know why, because I'm officially crowning this chair as my favorite chair in that mid-range price point of five to $600 US if you're looking for something new. If you're looking for something used, I still recommend this setup here. This is the renewed Aeron. This is a used Aeron with a Atlas headrest. And this setup is gonna run you about $600 US. So I'll be drawing comparisons between the two chairs as we go along because the price points are similar. But again, keep in mind that this setup will be about 10, 15 plus years old, whereas this will come brand new for about the same price. Let's get honest. If you guys wanna pick up the Noya chair, please use my affiliate link down below. It costs you nothing, but really helps this channel. And of course, if you like this review, like, subscribe, and all that jazz. The Noya chair was definitely designed for smaller folks. My theory is that if you are six feet or taller and slash or 240 pounds or heavier, and I'll put all that in metrics down below, this chair is gonna be uncomfortable for you. Just for reference, I'm five foot six, 174 pounds, and I find the size of this chair to be perfect for me, but I do run into slight discomfort on the seat in certain positions. Now for more data points, my wife who's five foot seven, yes hun, I'm admitting on camera, you're taller than me. So she's five seven and she's a lot lighter than me at about 110, 120 pounds. She finds this chair to be perfect for her. And then for a third data point, my friend who's five foot 10, 200 pounds, when he sat on this chair, he was like, oh, this is impressive. Especially because he's comparing it with chairs like the Aeron and the Embody. So he was really shocked by how good it felt he did run into a little bit of discomfort again on the seat because he is on the upper echelon of that weight limit. So keep that in mind if you're looking to pick up this chair. So what would make me crown the Noya chair to be the best chair in that five, $600 price range? Well, it's for three major reasons. One is because of the all mesh design. It's got mesh on the headrest, the back, and the seat pan. And while the mesh isn't as smooth as the one found on the Aeron, it is exponentially smoother than the one found on the M Favor chair, the budget chair. So that's really good. And mesh is really good for breathability. I found that it's really good because it doesn't pick up scents as well, right? Like if you are, and I mean this on all seriousness, although it sounds really funny, like if you're passing gas quite often in your chair and you've got a fabric chair, that fabric's gonna pick up that and it's gonna stain it forever. With mesh, because it's a little bit more holy, it's able to kind of pass some of that through and it doesn't stain nearly as much, or because it's a little a little bit more plastic in nature, you can clean it a lot easier than mesh where it just gets in there and just never, can't get it out, right? So there's that going for it. Um, the second major reason why I love it is because, remember how I was talking about when I did the Secret Lab review that I wanted a chair that could measure, like marry the ergonomics of an office chair, of like a, something like an Aeron, with the gaming ability, with that lean back feature of a gaming chair, and the Noya does it extremely well, like <laughs> really, really well. So while I can't go as far back as a gaming chair can, you can go back pretty far and then just with the touch of a finger, you can lock it in any position you please. And if you've never read anything on your laptop or watched anything on your computer lean back like this, there's nothing like it. I wish you could go back a little bit further, but this is pretty darn good. And it's an infinite lock, which means that you can literally lock it at any position you want. You wanna lock it perfectly 90, do it. If you wanna lock it a little bit further down, do it, right? There's no designated lock positions. You can lock it literally anywhere you feel like, and you can do that. And it is, again, a great marriage between the ergonomic office chair and the abilities of a gaming chair, and it does it really, really well. And the third reason, and you probably just saw it now, you're probably like, how did he just lock the chair with, without even moving his torso? Because a lot of these chairs, in order to adjust a lot of the functions, you have to really like lean or reach or like turn your torso. And I find it funny because like ergonomically, if you wanna have a chair where, uh, if you wanna ergonomically sit, you have to line your eyes with the top of your monitor. The problem with all these chairs is like, in order to adjust the height, you have to like lean down. So like 
you lean down and you like lower the height and you have to like, it's always a guessing game. You're like, oh, am I, did I hit it? And you're like, oh no. Oh, did I hit it? Ah, oh, too far. And you gotta come all the way back up. You know, it's that game that you play. With this chair, I feel like Secret Lab really put a lot of thought into how someone adjusts their chair. And I can adjust my chair, the height of the chair, without moving my torso whatsoever. I just, that's it. At the tip of literally my fingertips. Same thing with the lean back. I can do it leaning back at the tip of my fingertips. And I'll explain all that a little bit more in detail, but that's the other thing I love about this chair. They really thought about how someone adjusts their chair and because it's more accessible, I'll actually use it. Now, compare that with something like the Secret Life gaming chair, where if you wanna tighten the back tension, you have to literally get out of your chair because the, t the seat tension, the back tension is located underneath the seat and you can't adjust it unless you have like long, strong, long, what is it, Ar arm, long, long, long arm strong? I don't remember. <laughs> Unless you got these crazy long arms, which I don't think, I still don't think is physically possible. So overall, those are the three main reasons why I love it. But let me go ahead and explore the entire chair from bottom to top. And I'll be talking about pros and cons along the way. As always, we'll start from the bottom and work our way up. Starting with the casters. The casters aren't the quietest thing around. I don't know if you guys can hear that. They're not the quietest, but what I appreciate is that they seem to be hard floor and carpet casters. Like if you compare that, you see, this is on hard floor compared to my Aeron, which has carpet only casters. Like if I push it, it'll just keep going forever, which means you cannot use this on hard floor because you will mess up your back and your legs trying to hold the chair stable. So I appreciate that it's an all floor caster uh, as opposed to a you know single floor caster. So that's that. The legs, they look like, I don't know, polished chrome. I don't think they're actually chrome, they're probably stainless steel, but I appreciate that they're flat because for me, when I sit in my chair, I like to, tuck my legs under and rest my legs on top of the chair. And unlike the Aeron that has a very like slanted top, this has a very flat top, which means I can rest my feet there. And for those of you who wear shoes in the house or plan to wear shoes while you're sitting in this chair, and your chairs, your feet won't slip off the sides, right? So that those are the legs in a nutshell. Now coming to under the chair. Again, one of the things you will not find here that you find on all these gaming chairs is the impossible to reach under the chair adjuster knob that nobody will ever use because it's impossible to reach. But under the chair, there's only one adjuster and it's this on the bottom right. I don't know if you guys can see it here, I'll put it in the B-roll, but it is the back tilt tension adjuster. And this is what I meant earlier when I said they really thought about how to make the controls on this chair as accessible as possible because Unlike other chairs that have a knob that requires you to put your whole hand on and then spin with your wrist, that can hurt your wrist. And I've heard from people like, I've injured my hand, so I'm not able, I injured my wrist, so I'm not able to like turn that knob. These guys have a, what do you call this? It? Like a handlebar that you can crank. Now it requires some wrist power, but it requires a lot more arm power. And the other thing they thought of is that it sits in this really inward position that's hard to reach, but in order to make it easier for people to reach, you can pull it out, which makes it a lot easier to access. And then from here, you can crank it forward and you can crank it backwards really easily. So good on you, Secret Lab, for implementing something like this. I really appreciate it. So that is basically all there is under the chair. Now, we get to the seat and there's a lot to talk about here, both from a features perspective, a pros perspective, and unfortunately a cons perspective. So this is the part where you probably wanna hone in a little bit more, okay? So let's go just from the features. So the seat allows you to, if you look on the side here, and this is, <laughs> there's so many features that um, it almost, you almost lose track. So there's a button here on the left side that if you push it and you, you pull your hips out, the seat pan will shift out. Now, unlike the Embody that has the design where it's like a reverse tongue, where I like that reverse tongue feature better because if you sit in it and you just pull it out, it provides you more thigh support. But if it, the seat pan physically moves, sometimes what happens is that people end up creating like a like reverse slouching. Like they move their buttocks forward a little bit and creates this gap in the back seat where your back is no, your lower back is no longer touching the seat and creates some back tension, back pain there. So. Um, this unfortunately has the design where it shifts out, but not only that, if you try to sit all the way back and your seat is all the way out forward and you lean back a little bit, just a little bit in your chair, you feel this weird bump on your butt and it is not a good feeling. Like it feels like I'm sitting on hard plastic when you do that. 
So if you're someone who likes your seat pan out as far as it can go, and you're going to at the same time lean back, it's not gonna be comfortable for you and you're gonna end up scooching your butt up forward just to do so. If you're not someone like that and you don't mind having the seat pushed in, sorry, it's, it's also not the easiest adjustment in the world. If you don't and you wanna lean back, then it's no problem at all. It's only for those people who like to have the seat pan pretty far forward. So that's the seat pan slide adjuster. Now there are a couple other things and I'm getting confused with all the other chairs that I'm testing. So give me a second here. Wait, never mind. That's it. That's the only feature. So the seat pan can slide back and forth and that's the only feature about it. Now, this is where you really want to pay attention because this is where some of the cons get introduced about this chair. First things first, the mesh on the M favor is not nearly as taut as tight as something like on the Aeron and something like the M favor. And it's good and bad. It's good because if you're looking for a very like comfortable feel, the Noya is going to feel a little bit more comfortable than the Aeron because on the Aeron, the mesh is so tight that it feels like you'll be sitting on like a bouncy, like bouncy rubber, right? It's that taut, like it's pretty, it's pretty taut, right? On this, you're going to sink a little bit more. And honestly, it's not bad. It feels really good. Like when you sit in it, it feels really, really good. The downside though, is that there is a really aggressive foam pad in the front here that if you're on the heavier end of that 240 pound limit, you're gonna feel that a little bit more aggressively in your thighs than if you were on the lighter end. Again, I'm 174 pounds and I start to feel it after a long time too. Now there are a couple ways that you can circumvent this which run into some more cons. Again, this gets a little bit more complicated. The first thing that you can do is you can go ahead and pull the seat pan out like I showed you before and you'll be okay, right? Like because then the pad will be a little bit, won't be sitting as aggressively on that thigh area. The other thing you can do is you, and this is generally you want to do anyway, right? You probably want to get like a, 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 um, a foot rest on the bottom so that because an ideal ergonomics position is that your leg should never be dangling off of the lead edge anyway. It should be raised up a little bit, actually be a little over 90 degrees. So and pretend like I'm, you know, I've got a foot rest. This might be a little high, but if I'm here, then that pad isn't digging into my thighs as much. So that's something that you might want to consider as well. And the third thing that you can do to circumvent the pain here, if you start to feel it or the discomfort is you can be an ergonomics rebel. Now this chair is big enough to accommodate a ergonomics rebel. And because it's got padding all over the edges, this isn't going to be uncomfortable for your toes. If you're people who don't have shoes on, don't wear shoes in the house, don't wear shoes when you sit on your chair. So if you're like me and you just got socks on really cool dragon socks, I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, this is something that you can do to circumvent that. It's not the perfect solution, but again, mesh is, I think, really hard to implement. And for $600, you might find that to be like, oh, I wish they could have done it better. But keep in mind, like the Aeron is $1,000 plus, and I think they've done it perfectly. The only thing is you don't get a lot of like flexibility because you can't cross your legs on a chair like this. Moving now to the lumbar support. The lumbar support on the Noya starts at the lower mid back and then you can raise it a little bit higher to the mid back and then you can make it more aggressive than it already is. Now for me personally, I realize that I like my lumbar support to start lower if it can. So this is the renewed Aeron with the posture fit lumbar support and this is the Noya and you can see that the lumbar on the Noya starts a good sense higher compared to the Aeron's lumbar support. So it's not my favorite lumbar support, but that's me personally. This is a personal thing. Um, now to adjust the lumbar support on this is going to contradict everything I just told you guys earlier because it's not easy to do. So the first thing you can do is you can raise the lumbar support and the way you do that is there's like this plastic like little thing, little curve thing you can feel back there and you can grab that and you can just pull it up and you'll feel the pad kind of extend upward. So that's the first thing you can do. And the second one is really hard to do. There are two buttons here on the side of the Noya. And what you do is you, you push those with your thumbs and then with your middle fingers, you push the top plastic pad forward. And if you do that, the seat basically kind of juts forward and the lumbar becomes a little bit more aggressive. Now this for me is a little bit too aggressive. And again, the way you reset it is you just push the buttons and it will just flop back. So stock lumbar is better for me and I do like the lumbar raise. So I have more vertical coverage of my spine. So that's the lumbar in a nutshell. Moving now to the arms, they can be adjusted vertically by just pulling them up. There's no button to push. You just crank them and you can hear the clicks. And if you wanna move it down, you have to raise it all the way up and then it'll just go down by itself. So that's the arm adjustment. Not ideal. I wish there was a way to be a little bit more precise because you'll never know if the arms are like perfectly even unless you're counting the ticks. 
which can be hard to do. So that's the, the vertical adjustment, uh, the, I mean, the vertical adjustment. And then they can also civil. And unlike 90% of chairs out there, minus the Herman Millers, the arm civil is actually decent. Like you actually get a good amount of space when you swivel them outwards, middle, and inwards. The only adjustment I wish that these arms would have is I wish that they would be able to be adjusted outwards a little bit more because it feels a little bit claustrophobic here, right? I wish there's a little bit more space. I also wish that the arms would tilt with you when you went down because the tilt is so good. Unfortunately, these arms don't tilt with you here. They stay static at that level compared to more expensive chairs and generally a feature of more expensive chairs, but watch these arms. Oh, I gotta help. The arms move with you so that because 90 degrees when you're sitting straight for your arms is not 90 degrees when you're leaning back. So these arms move with you. Some other chairs that are reviewed also move with you. Unfortunately, the Noya doesn't. So that's the arm adjustments. Now, the star of the show here is what Secret Lab calls, I forget what they called it, something shift. I forget, I'll, I'll put it in the below here. But it's what I showed you guys earlier. The right one controls the chair's height. And if you sit up and you push it and you go up and then you just push it and you'll go down. And then the second one is gonna be that back tilt adjust. You push it once, oh, push it once and you'll unlock the back and you can go unlimited. And again, if you wanna tighten the tension, it's that little um, wind up bar on the right side. And again, it's an infinite lock, which means anywhere you wanna be, you're like, oh, I really like this position. You lock it and you're locked. And it's great because again, it's so accessible that you'll actually use it. On some of these gaming chairs, because they're just so big, you have to lean back and you gotta like reach really far and you gotta turn like a knob down here, which just makes it really hard to do and it's just kind of annoying. Here, this means that I'll adjust infinitely until I'm super comfortable because it's just so accessible. I really, really appreciate these little tab gestures. I wish there was more that you could do with these things. I wish they would come up with more features, but that's the arms in a nutshell. Now moving to the headrest. <sighs> okay, so a headrest, I'm realizing on chairs all suck. The Noya chair does it better than anybody else, but it's also because you pay for it separately. Some people might be like, oh, you gotta pay for a headrest? That's ridiculous, these other chairs come with one. Yeah, the problem is all those headrests suck so much. And I realized like how good Atlas headrests are after having used all these headrests from these other chairs. Because, well, let me explain why other headrests are bad, first of all. Other headrests, and I explained this on the M favor, because they're static. You cannot move them in or out. And because of that, most headrests are so far back when you're sitting at 90, that in order to use them, you create that like triple chin effect, right? And it's like a really awkward position. And because they don't adjust forward, unlike the Atlas where you can put it, in, look, look at that range, it's ridiculous. Where you can move it as far as you want, a lot of these headrests can't. The Atlas is the only one where you can kind of adjust the, the horizontal limit, where you can actually pull it towards you and it will actually move for you, right? So it's got that going for it. And the part that sucks about it is that the vertical adjustment is really hard to do. So it's one of these, oh God, like, you, that is loud. And it scares me because on the M favor headrest, like when I was trying to adjust it because it was so hard to do, it crashed into my spine, my neck bone here, and it left a bruise for weeks. So here, it's a little bit easier to do, but it's still really scary because like, you can't control it because you need so much force. So again, a reason why these headrests are just not great. But the fact that they can go low, the fact that you can adjust it somewhat forward and back, it's not really moving forward and back. You're moving it kind of down. Like, like if this is the headrest, you're kind of transforming it down versus up like that. And it can also swivel as well. The Atlas headrest is just so good because it can adjust in and out, up and down. And then you can swivel the front as well. Just this three axis is really clear. And then the reason why the Atlas headrest is good but not perfect is because the angle, like the angle of the headrest doesn't sit nicely in my neck curve here compared to something like the headrest of Atlas, which is again, I realize how much ingenuity and how much thought there was in the Atlas headrest for the Aeron series and soon to be in body series, guys. Thumbs up for that. Um, but yeah, this is not bad. It's better, like I said, it's better than 80% of the other chairs that come with headrests, including the Mavics, including the Cities that I've tested, including the M Favor, including all these other chairs, better than most. 
Not nearly as good as the Atlas for the Aeron series though. Okay guys, that pretty much sums up this chair. So again, at five, $600, is it worth it? I would say yes. If you're looking for a new chair and you're looking for a chair that can do it all, that can support you, give you actual lumbar support compared to some of the gaming chair counterparts, that can give you that kind of like lean, like, oh, whoops, that lean back thing. Like it's really well done. And the build quality is pretty darn decent. Like there's nothing that I'm worried is gonna break. And you're gonna compare that again later to some of these more expensive chairs, which I am worried about. But it feels like a really solid chair. I, unfortunately, they don't design it in a bigger size. I wish they would for my bigger friends out there. But yeah, I, I would highly recommend this chair because it can do it all. I think it can do it all. And you need to pick up the headrest because of the ability to be able to lean back and lock the chair. Now, like I said in the beginning though, would I pick it over this setup here? This is, again is the as a used Aeron. This is a used renewed Aeron with the Atlas headrest, which is gonna run you about $600. Is it better than this? I'm gonna say it can give it a run for its money. In terms of pure ergonomics, no. I think this chair is gonna give you a better ergonomic sitting experience for most people. Some people hate the Aeron and I get that. Not, not, Aeron is not made for everybody. But I think this is gonna give you an overall better experience in terms of ergonomics. But what it can't do is it can't switch from an ergonomic chair into a comfort lounge chair like the Noya can do. And that means a lot to certain folks and it means a lot to me and because of that, I, I, I don't know how to say this, but I'm glad I have both chairs. My, my wife loves this chair. So if I wanna like watch something, I'll, I'll give her my body for a minute and I'll steal this chair. So yeah, with all that being said, guys, I hope you guys like this video. Use my affiliate links down and below if you wanna pick up the Noya chair or any, any chair from Secret Lab. And until next time, guys, love you all, stay safe, and as always, stay honest.